Welcome to this reflection for Maundy Thursday, which comes from my home. Today, around the world, the Church remembers the last meal which Jesus shared with his disciples around the time of this celebration of the Jewish festival of the Passover. I want to begin by recalling that this Jewish celebration, of course, still takes place, and it happens in their homes. On contemporary Jew blogs, about the meal that there's hardly room for the meal on the table. There are candles and several bottles of wine, baskets of unleavened bread, and of course the centrepiece, the Seder plate, on which are placed seven foods through which the story of the liberation of the Jews from slavery in Egypt is retold. The meal, as well as strengthening bonds within the family and extended family of the Jewish community, also helps to convey some truths about life and to shape the participants' expectations to inform their values. To take one example, one of the items on the Seder plate is parsley and salt, appropriately a symbol of springtime, and this parsley is taken from our garden, but also a sign that tears sometimes need to be shed before joy can be experienced. Recalling how difficult the journey to freedom was for the Jews travelling for those 40 years in the wilderness. It is the personal and intimate nature of the Passover meal that I want to convey and to remind us that the Christian celebration connects with the Jewish celebration which itself reached back at the time of Christ, more than 1,500 years. The importance of this Jewish celebration is that it puts the family or household at the very centre of life and makes the sharing of a meal at the table the most important event in any household. That it brings spirituality and religious belief into the most personal and intimate context of life. And that this is of prior importance, if you like, to the adoption of this celebration and the ritualisation of it by the church in its services. So on this Maundy Thursday, we travel back in our imagination to be with Jesus and his disciples as they share this meal together. We begin with the collect prayer for Maundy Thursday. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son Jesus Christ taught us that what we do for the least of our brethren, we do also for him. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel reading is read for us by Michael Bloom and it is accompanied by a painting by Bernard Strievel, painted around 1520 and entitled Christ Washing the Disciples' Feet. A reading from John chapter 13. It was just before the Passover feast Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean. 
though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Thanks be to God. In his painting, Striegel captures a dramatic moment in the account Jesus, having taken off his outer garment and wrapped a towel around his waist, approaches Peter as a servant. Peter has raised Jesus on a pedestal as the strong leader, the Messiah, lowering himself in equal proportion. He cannot then allow his Saviour, who he needs to look up to as the one who will deliver him and his people, to take on now the role of a servant and to approach him from below cannot let him touch his feet, dirty and dusty as they would have been, and which he'd only ever allow a servant to do. Maundy Thursday derives from the same origin as the word mandate or command, and it is after washing their feet that Jesus tells his disciples, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. And rather than explaining what he means by love, he has demonstrated and performed it. The church is to be founded on this one principle, that love is the only true liberator, a love which serves. And in this pandemic, the value and truth of this is in its own way self-evidence, as, as a nation, we are also indebted to those serving our needs at this time. May we, with Peter, learn and take on board that truth. And hear Jesus' clear instruction, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all whom you love this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen.